since it's one of those very rare, real nice days over in Tillamook and we're here not far from the museum, we're going to go to the Pioneer Museum. I've been wanting to find out what happened to some of the wreckage off the B-17 Flying Fortress that crashed on Cape Lookout and somebody suggested they might have it at the Pioneer Museum. So we're going to go in and check it out. Plus, I have a lot of fond memories of this place. There used to be a person here that sort of got me started on taxidermy. And I used to go in and get advice from him on where to see certain birds and what birds were and different things when I was a park ranger. Although he's been long since gone. The old Tillamook Hotel is still standing and apparently still open. I'm surprised. It's really old and it's huge considering Tillamook. Marge has to check out all the flowers on the landscape out in front of the museum and I'm anxious to get in there to try to find out where in the world the pieces from the B-17 are. As soon as I get in, I immediately ask one of the people from behind the desk. And they said, yeah, we have some pieces. All the well, I was pleased to see the B-17 is at least represented in here. Next, we go see some of Alex Walker's taxidermy work. He's got every kind of bird in here that ever flew, I think. And they're done very nicely and displayed in display cases. He was so hard of hearing that he had to get you in a quiet room and sit down uh, across the table and then he could hear quite well. So I used to go in and see him quite a bit and he'd tell me where different birds were and where nests were and, and then if I went to one of the spots, he'd ask how many nests were there. And he'd say, there used to be three there. And I'd say, well, there are four now. And he'd say, oh, I'm so glad to hear that. Anyway, he's got bird eggs of any kind of bird, I think, that ever laid an egg. Even an old brown pelican is mounted in one of the display cases all the display cases they made use of every inch are some deer and several species of bighorn sheep up there i even see an african animal's horns and some different kinds of deer peeking over the edge at us as we walk through more display cases with birds of all different kinds, birds of prey, and they're all so nicely done in action poses in natural habitat. And this is probably one from uh, maybe on the tip of Cape Lookout, there's um, a nesting colony of myrrh there. And this sort of looks like it. I'm not sure that's where uh, he, got, he was inspired to do this. But even one of the mirror has a fish clutched tightly between its jaws. He not only has our local birds, but he has birds from several other different places and animals from a lot of different places. This is Alaska, I believe. Even has a polar bear, musk ox, and a grizzly bear all mounted very nicely in a showcase. The more you look around, the more stuff there is to see. There's this building is three stories. Uh, it was a large old courthouse till a new one was built and then it was turned into a museum. And so there's just, just scads and scads of stuff to see here. It takes hours to go through all this, and then you're going to miss some of it. But you look around in different places, you see other birds and animals all over the place, even some penguins. 
I even see a swan in, in here. Uh, I think that what, what usually they do in these museums, they get a permit to do the federal migratory uh, birds and animals. And then uh, they, when people bring them in and, and Alex Walker would go ahead and do them, there's even some some otter and a snow scene with a black, local black-tailed deer and even a turtle and s several different types of geese. There's a lot of different kinds of geese show up around here and more of the otter. Oh, here he is, Marge, his wow. picture. Yep, that's Alex. Yeah. And it looks as if he's meticulously stitching up a bird that he's mounting. Here, read what it says about him. Oh, just a second. Did you, did you read that at the top? Mm. Did you take a picture of what it said there? Back up a second. Alex Walker was born August 11th, 1890, in a sod house on the Nebraska prairie, spending the majority of his childhood in the Midwest. A World War veteran World serving War in the United States Coast Guard, Mr. Walker became a well-known ornithologist and taxidermist with little formal education and training. Mr. Walker worked professionally as a cheesemaker in Tillamook and later served as field ornithologist for the Cleveland, Ohio Museum of Natural History beginning in 1930. In 1951, Mr. Walker was engaged to collect, prepare, and install for exhibitions a natural history collection on the second floor of the museum with a $4,500 gift from the Coates family. In 1955, Mr. Walker became curator of the museum and served in this capacity until his death in 1975. That beauty of a snowy egret. That looks like the great blue hair and some and he's got pen prints. No matter what kind of owl it is, they're a very dignified looking bird and I get a kick out of the way they can crank their heads around, almost like they're turning it clear around. There are owls of all sizes and shapes in here, from very small ones to some fairly large ones, all probably some that are from Oregon. Oh, here's the bar doll. There's the bar doll. And there's almost no end to the little songbirds of different size, colors, and shapes. They're just case after case of birds. And even the big old pileated woodpecker, there's a whole case of different kinds of woodpeckers. And then the marsh birds or uh, water type birds or just scads and scads of them, all mounted 
in sort of natural habitat and even some beavers and the snowy owls from Alaska are in this case and different kinds of ducks the wood duck very pretty one and an old coyote looks like he'd like to get his teeth in the, one of those ducks and then all sorts of different grouse and even a big pretty swan and all sorts of blackbirds they make really pretty music around a marsh of a morning and evening and sometimes all day long and then just scads and scads of waiting birds and bird nests till there's no end to them. Any kind of a bird that laid an egg probably has, is represented in this case. Some of them just have a few eggs, Into. others more. Some eggs are really big and others are quite conservative in size. Kodiak Burn, a gray or timber wolf skull, and leopard, and there's the beaver skull, and even some fish. old-fashioned shoes an old china cabinet with the old china still in it and a dress for a fancy lady on the occasions when she wants to look fancy Huge old Chinook. Yes. There exhibits for most every culture that's ever been here. There's a particularly nice exhibit for the Native Americans inside the old vault door. Remember this was at one time an old courthouse. And so here's the Native American stuff. Some tiny miniature replicas of their canoes. Lewis and Clark tried to buy some of these canoes because they were such good canoes, made so well. And here's pictures of some of the Native Americans and lots and lots of tiny stone points in very nicely displayed in cases and a bunch of trade beads and things they did with the beads. Also some stone and bone tools. Bone tools were quite a, important to the Native Americans in Tillamook County because they would work for about everything and they weren't really warlike people. So the stone were easier to work and work well. And then lots more beads, trade beads, that from uh, fur traders and other people. And more of the excellent stone points that are in this case and the ones above were some fishing tools mostly made of bone and then the loggers are represented here too that long board thing with the metal on the end was what they hammered in the trees to stand on to cut the to cut the trees with those really 
uh, tall stumps and you can still see some of these around different places around the Tillamook area and other places in Oregon. Then more and more of the stone and bone tools used by the Native Americans. Lots of fishing tools. And how about some net weights? And then some scrapers and uh, fleshing tools. They have a display of Native American baskets. The Tillamook Indians were very clever at making baskets and they made them from sedges and reeds they found in the swamps and some were wove so tight they could even boil food in them. Well we've been to about everything in the first two levels and we're going down to the basement in just a bit and this section is devoted to the loggers at Tillamook County and they thought they would never run out of trees and so they had these springboards they hammered into the trees and cut real long stumps. Well, we're down in the basement now, and here's some of the transportation things. From an old stagecoach, a bobsled, and then the burial, or the coffin baskets. This basket, it said, was used to put the deceased in, uh, for display in the home for a few days after it had, the deceased had been embalmed and then later uh, it was taken out of this and put in a coffin, coffin and buried and then an old dugout canoe made of, uh, out of a cedar log. And Smokey the Bear, with his shovel, ready to fight fires, even made it into this portion of the museum. And there's all sorts of old, old things down here too. Just a really excellent display of everything that the pioneers could have needed, I think. Ox yokes, some very nice ox yokes even a single ox yoke. If you're going to work just one ox, you use this one. And then the that's called the double tree with two single trees on it. No cocks. That's a logger's term. That means the sharp little uh, things that stick in the bottoms of the boots to keep the loggers from slipping on logs and in the timber. You're not supposed to wear them on on floors and things. So you'll see, they used to see them all over Tillamook County. The loggers would have to take off their logging boots with, with these sharp little things in the bottom of them before they could go in the building. And then all kinds of logging tongs and some of the old crosscut saws, some really large ones for doing the huge old trees. And there's some more of the spring boards. The boards with the metal on the end of them are called the spring boards. And they've got a pretty good display of old chainsaws here as well as crosscut saw. And there's a guy standing on a springboard sawing a tree. And then came the gasoline chainsaws from very primitive ones that were probably this one right here was probably mainly used to buck up logs and cut cut wood and things like that while the old the other old chainsaws like are in the background and they would have been really heavy and hard to use and I remember them myself 
and it would just take you forever to get one of them started. They didn't want to start usually. And many other things that pioneer families would have needed to have around and of course even a blacksmith shop is represented here in the basement of the Pioneer Museum. And baskets, an old milk can with a cream churn on top of it, and uh, different types of churns for cream, and even a, a wooden barrel to put your butter in. And there's a churn that's pretty much automated. And then the old cream separators that you crank them by hand, and they'd separate the cream from the milk. And here's an old kettle that you could have made cheese in or cooked most anything you would want in this old kettle. And a picture of an old milk cow that made all this possible. This is some kind of a press, I think, for making cheese. Because Tillamook, there used to be little cheese factories. Every place you'd look, only every few miles there'd be a cheese factory. Till they got good trucks to truck the milk to wherever they wanted. Otherwise, they just had the factories where the cattle were. And then, some of the glass floats that have drifted over here mostly from Japan and then the seafarers are mentioned here too with a ship's wheel and other things and the blacksmith shop still has an old forge and some of the other tools they needed to go about their day-to-day -day life as a blacksmith and even a big old bear trap. And then we can't forget the moonshiners. They have to be mentioned too. They've got several different kinds of steels. This one's made on a boiler that housewives would heat water on a wood stove with, but maybe somebody decided it would work better to make some moonshine during the prohibition days. And then an old electric cook stove and some different types of presses here. I think a lot of these were, were cider presses, maybe some were lard presses. I'm not sure what all of them were made for, but there's some all different kinds, sizes, and shapes of them. And they're really some nice presses. And then from there on, we have to see the things that made the housewife's life a little easier. How about some old wash machines? And there are wash machines here that you wouldn't believe that they actually use. This one even has a rinse tub. Several of them have a rinse tub combined. There's another old ringer wash machine and another and another. And some of them you cranked by hand, others even had gasoline motors. And the ringers were there to wring the water out of the clothes. And then the horse type things that, that went on with the horses, the harnesses. There's another ox yoke uh, and some more harness parts hanging on the wall. Those ox yokes look really, really neat. And there's one that half of it is, has disappeared from it. But they've got a pretty good display of the things they used for the beasts of burden. Those are old side saddles for women to ride. Right? 
and then a display of, of bits, everything from workhorses to saddle horses. And uh, then a bunch of old tools, a whole bunch of different sizes, wood planes for making furniture and planing wood down. And then old phonographs and radios all over the place. They play that old music that, uh, that I'm sure the people nowadays probably wouldn't enjoy as much as they did then. But if you had something that would make noise of any kind, it was probably sought after pretty heavily. And a display of old musical instruments. And then formal table settings. And if, of course you needed a car back then. And so here's what you had to choose from. The horseless carriage, they'd call them. And even some old cowboy saddles with the tall saddle horn on them for rope and steer. Pack saddle. And an elder clean gray. Here's your barbed wire collection. These beeswax with the inscriptions on them, they're from the old Spanish main. Some of the old ships that, that wrecked up around Neoconi Mount. And they were carrying beeswax and candles and things. And if the British would pull them over, they'd say, look what good guys we are. We're taking candles and beeswax to the missions and the missionaries and we wouldn't think of being pirates. And then a huge old hollowed out tree stump that a family actually lived in. That's really a cute idea for a home. And then Lots more dishes and all sorts of stuff down here that are valuable antiques. And even an old broad axe for hewing log cabins is there. And of course it's Tillamook, so you'd have to have cowbells here. A lot of these people, that early settlers here, were from Switzerland, so probably those cowbells were brought over from Switzerland. And a display of some very old flintlock rifles and pistols as well. From there we go on to the military display of uh, people that served our nation in the various different wars. They have mannequins with the uniform on them. Some of the remains of the B-17 Flying Fortress that I took with my camera sometime in the 1970s. And I've been looking at museums trying to find them. If anyone knows the whereabouts of them, please let me know in the comments section. Thank you.